go but that would have been a long time and we probably have new listeners now mm -hmm. who this might be some interesting information too so the sink is nevis fire and rescue services basically we separated from police in 2000 so the sink is nevis fire and rescue services is just about 21 years old but the fire brigade is about 100 plus years old oh, wow. it was actually started in october in 1872 on the island of nevis so it was started on nevis so those of you who don't know that or who didn't know you know now <laughs> including myself yes, yes. It was according to the research that was done mm. it was started on nevis in the year 1872 and it was only brought to sink is three years later in 1875. At that time, we had one captain, one lieutenant, and 25 men. That was the fire department back in those days. The appointment, of course, was made by the administrator, whoever that was. And these officers were enlisted for 12 months. So in, in our day, we'll probably say that they were on a contract. Oh. So they were enlisted for 12 months. So for a year? Yeah. If they don't perform? Then we'll probably find somebody else. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, if the work was too demanding uh, and it doesn't match the pay, mm -hmm. um, they might want to they find some place yeah. to go and then you'd have to find a replacement. Okay, okay. Okay, so what is really interesting is their salary though. Their pay was as follows. The captain, he worked for a whopping 480 cents. <laughs> if you do your conversion, that's only four dollars and eight cents. <laughs> I like how you put it, you know. <laughs> so the captain worked for four dollars and eighty cents, mm. while the lieutenant worked for two dollars and forty cents, mm -hmm. and the regular officer only worked for sixty cents. Now that's, we that's can't imagine. What are we doing now? Week or month? Well, them days or weeks. Yeah, we don't by the week. Yeah. sixty cents a week. Mm. As as a matter of fact, um. Correction, the officers were paid on a monthly basis. <laughs> so you're talking about 60 cents a month. A month. You could imagine that in today's oh, time. Oh, wow. I'm <laughs> telling you. <laughs> so, yes, they were paid on a monthly basis. And the captain, $4.80. The lieutenant, $2.40. And the regular officer only worked for 60 cents a month. The division, it became a part of the Royal St. Kitts and Navy's Police Force in 1956 under the command of Superintendent James, an Englishman, according to this research. The brigade became a part of the Leeward Island Police Force by SRO 2459. The name was changed by an act of legislator, number 967, and was referred to as the St. Kitts Nevis Anguilla Police Force Brigade. The brigade was then divorced, divorced sorry, from the police, from the Royal St. Christopher Navy's Police Force slash Brigade on the 4th of January 2000, again by an Act of Parliament, number 6 of 99, thereby assuming the name the St. Kitts Navy's Fire and Rescue Services. In all the areas stated, the foregoing, it is all geared towards ensuring optimum safety. So before 2000, we were one with the police. Mm -hmm. We were all police officers, of course. There were some who would have been assigned to the fire station and some to the police station. We, mm -hmm. were, we were all trained as police officers. And in 2000, the same year that I joined, so either fortunately or unfortunately, I was not trained as a police. As a police, you came <laughs> in as a, a fireman. I was trained as a Can I, Let me fire. jump in in a quick yes. question. Something just, just done to cross my mind. Was the act that made the, the, the division, as I would say, was that um, coming from fire officers, police officers, or in general, let's say the government decided, okay, let's, le let's let the fire go on, it, on its own, or they was following a pattern that was out in the outer world where fire was different to police? Do you know which one, you um, know, this, how um, that came about? Honestly, I, I, I am not 
too soon. That's a good question, though. <laughs> yes, yes. And I, I would I, like I, to know the driving I would research force. that. I would yeah. research that so I could have an answer when I come back. But good, I'm not good, certain whether good. it was the fire officers who fought for it or mm. if it was the government so they need to separate. Because somebody had to um, Because the, the thing is, I'm not sure if it's a pattern that we were following because down in the Caribbean islands, mm. Antigua in particular, fire and police was, the, was different. Still one. They still one. I think okay. Antigua is still one with okay, the police. Okay, okay. If they if they're separated, it is properly just happened. But mm. Antigua, Barbados, all those guys were one with the police. So that was the, the pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, where you find police and fire separated, that would be more like in the outer world, like in Americas, um, maybe in Europe and them type of places, the bigger countries. Mm -hmm. um, but the pattern in the Caribbean was police and fire were one. Um, so I researched who actually decided to make the very good question. The break. Yes, it mm. is. It is. Yes. So that's basically fire department. Um, a brief history, very where we history. came from, and where we are today. <laughs> so we would have gone from sand buckets. We would have gone from horse carts. <laughs> we would have gone from trucks where the firefighters ride on the outside of the trucks. Yeah to more modern engines where everybody is safe and so on on the inside and you don't have to worry about anybody falling off the back yep. of the truck. Yep. Okay, so continuing from last week, we basically move on to using tools and equipment safely. Now, one of the things that we always teach, and this is in general for anybody who uses tools, you must learn to use the tools and equipment properly before using them in an emergency, and that would be for us. And uh, practice doing basic repairs on tools and equipment at the fire station until you can perform them quickly and safely when you're out on a scene and the, the chainsaw is not starting. You must know how to take that down in seconds, put it back up and get it started. Mm. You have to, it is necessary. But for us, we always, we believe in having two. So if one goes down, you have a backup. So it eliminates that time that you have to spend to get this other one going unseen. You get somebody to check that while you put the other one in service right away. And one of the most important things, you always use a tool for what it is designed for. <laughs> you know, we, we like to, you know, I, 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 I am guilty of it. I, I do a little bit of mechanics and sometimes I need to tap something, but at the time I don't have the tapping tool, I don't have a hammer, so we take the adjustable wrench, mm, I take the mm. pipe and start beating with it. But that is not what it's designed for. In times, uh, in, in times of emergency, <laughs> any tool will do. <laughs> well, that is true, but we, we try and practice to use a tool, what it is designed mm. for, because if that tool fails and something catastrophic happens, then you would have to justify why, it, why, why it did, yes, that happens. Yes. And if it is proven that you were using it for the wrong purpose, then you might have a problem right there. Mm -hmm. So we recommend that you use a tool for what it is designed for. A saw that is designed for cutting wood, you don't use it to cut steel. You have problems. <laughs> a hammer is designed for beating. For, for it's a striking tool, you use it for striking. And that is general for, for carpenters, um, anybody who, 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 who use these type of tools, use them for what they were designed for. All right? Electrical safety. That's for us, we always check overhead power lines when you're raising a ladder. And again, persons who work on ladders, when you're raising a ladder, you always check for overhead power lines. Ladders, depend on the, the, the material that it is made from, it conducts electricity and you could be easily electrocuted. So you must pay much attention to when raising ladders. And uh, if you're using those, what you call booms, or uh, even those bucket trucks mm -hmm. that the electrical company and cable and utility companies use. Of course, part of their training, I would assume, is that when you're raising those buckets, you pay very close attention to those high tension lines. Yep. They, they, they carry a lot, of, a lot of voltages of electricity, so you have to pay attention to those. The electrical power supply to a building, it should be turned off. So whenever we respond to especially house fires, one of the first things we do, we contact the Skellig. We contact the electrical company and have them turn the power supply off. Yes, 
to basically reduce the risk of um, electrocution. So you want to have persons to know that, and even you as the homeowner, if there's an outbreak or fire outbreak in your house, as soon as possible, if you can, you find where your, your, um, your fuse boxes are, your breakers, the main switch, it is good that you know where they are, so you immediately go and you turn those off. Okay, so at least the risk of electrocution is minimized when the fire officer gets on scene. Of course, as I mentioned, Skelly could already be there. Whenever you see a line or anything that looks like a power line on the ground, you always assume that it is live. Always assume that that line is live until you can confirm that it is dead. So even for children, children coming home from school, you teach them to see a power line on the ground or they just see a line lying on the ground, whether it is a black line or if it's a silver line, you just leave it, walk far away from it, don't touch it, don't tell your friends not to touch it. The grown-ups as well, stay far from down lines, if, especially if you do not work for a utility company where you can differentiate whether it's an electric line or if it's cable. You stay far from the lines. You call the utility companies and have them come and check to see whether the line is still energized and basically um, de-energize the line. For fire department, we always, always, once we have a house fire, Skellig is the first person we call. Hey, we have a house fire, we need the electricity to that house or maybe that particular area to be cut so that we could um, have a productive or uh, successful operation. Sorry. Okay, just some tips for lifting heavy loads. Do not try to move something that is too heavy alone. Uh, don't try to be in a hulk. We always refer to the Chinese and the Japanese and the Asian people when it comes to lifting load. Whenever you hear about lifting load, hey, the Chinese, Chinese man, you take ten, uh, ten man will lift up that. But the black man, the hulk man, he won't lift it up by himself. <laughs> so, <laughs> So we obviously don't try lifting anything that is too heavy. Ask for help. Ask for help. Prevent back injuries by always bending at the knees and assuming a leg lift. Your leg muscle is probably the strong, well, strongest muscle in the, on the body. Once you lift with your legs and keep your back straight, you get the load lift easier. If you lift with your back, you damage your back because there's hinges in your back. You bend your back, it damage your spine. Over time, that constant bending and lifting, bending and lifting, it damage your back, especially if you don't have something to support your back. So keep your back straight, bend your knees, and lift with your legs whenever you're lifting any heavy load. We have to do this quite often in fire department when we have to be what we call makeup. When we go on a fire scene, now we have to roll back up the lines, we have to pick the tools back up, we call that makeup. And it's a lot of bending all the time, bending, bending, bending. While some of the equipment, they're not that heavy, you still want to encourage keeping your back straight, bend, and you lift with your legs. Okay? <laughs> How often do you guys train, going to training? Well, the thing is, once, you have, once we have recruits, you will have what you call a recruit training. After recruit training, then all the other training is more or less on the job training. You train while you work. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are occasionally you would have to set aside um, certain dates for special training where you basically um, pull certain officers from the different stations and you conduct a, a, a training, whether it's in uh, leadership or uh, whether it is, um, you know, supervision. We have those type of training, but once you have the, the, the basic recruit training, that is the, the master training, because that is where you, you learn all the fundamentals of firefighting. After that, on the job training is just added to the foundation. Um, new techniques that, 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 and these techniques, they evolve all the time. All the time you find a new way to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be abreast of the new um, training, the new techniques, the new technology, the new equipment. So as we get new equipment, we also have to train 
So as fast as we get equipment, we have training. Um, yes, yeah, so we try and do it as often as possible. Um, we well, right now, right now, what we have been doing, um, as I mentioned, is basically on the job training. But going into December time, we kind of focus on because there's a lot of we find that there's a lot of vehicular um, activity, especially around December time, because you have persons coming in. You have a lot more rentals on yeah, the road, so time. we try to focus on vehicle accidents, mm. and we kind of brush up on on um, our extrication vehicle extrication techniques, mm. so that in the event that we have any accidents and we are called out to, we are ready. We are always ready to respond, but at least we are more ready mm -hmm. and prepared during the December season. So right. do you guys like have morning morning exercises to keep fit? Uh, do, do you guys enroll in any kind of physical um, programs that you all would do together or individually? Are you... Are you supposed to be mandated <laughs> to be physically fit since you got to do a lot of running and lifting and jumping and things like that? Well, I think this is this is an area where we we are falling short, honestly. would not you guys uh, yes. build a, a, a gym? We have a gym. We have a, we do have a gym, and uh, it is utilized some officers and unfortunately some officers don't utilize the gym. I, should be <laughs> mandatory, wouldn't it? Uh, it is. It fitness be. is mandatory. Yeah. Fitness is mandatory. And as I mentioned, unfortunately, that's one of the areas where we would have, that we need to do some more work on. We have had, we would have had, had um, fitness training um, a weekly, where we had an outside trainer who would come in, um, I think on Wednesdays, and whatever shift is working and then she would work with that shift okay. um she had to leave for some time and then that program we never really got it started again but it is still on the books so that's something that we have to we have to yeah, work on should, because should, being definitely. physically fit as we have been preaching is critically important because we cannot cannot afford to be called out on a scene and it it is it, it is seen that we are inefficient because we are not fit mm -hmm. we just run out to line and we're blowing <laughs> we can't even finish the operation that will be unacceptable once we leave the totally. center yard once we leave the yard we go to the scene we work to completion and then we get back of course depending on the duration of the operation you would have to have rehabilitation and you would have to have rotations mm -hmm. Where you would need to take a crew out and bring in and a fresh crew. crew. Like if you do and like <coughs> in most fire and that kind of thing. Right, in most cases when we have those large bush fires, mm -hmm. uh, we always call in back up from the other stations. So you will find three stations at one fire. Oh. And so it minimizes the work mm -hmm. um, that the particular station that is responsible for that district would have to do. It minimizes the load because all the other stations are basically sharing the load. So we have to rehabilitate to provide um, periods of rest and recovery for, you know, your workers. We still can't burn them out. I have not seen a firefighting in progress in a quite a while, which is a good thing. But in the old days, you know, you used to see a few. In the old days, people used to run and go see fire. <laughs> if a house burning, people yeah, actually it, it go to still see fire. Right? And one of the things that we used to, used to like, it was uh, almost comical and so. Uh, Back in the day, you had like four or five guys holding a hose. Does that still happen? Uh, is there new, any design that is different now where a single guy could handle a hose by himself well, or maybe two, yes. one to the back? Kind of yes, and that, in? that's... In the old days, the um, hose used to... <laughs> I mean, it was like jokes. You see, it. because... I mean, as, like I tell you, modern advancements, the, the mm. persons who make these things, they, they saw the deficiencies in the old school style. Mm. And back in the day... Was it because of the cloth ones? The, the, the weight? Well, that's the one. Tools, yeah. That's one. And back in the day, they would have done the, 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 what they were supposed to do back in the day. Mm. But nowadays, um, because you find that a, what we call a branch, 
that is where you control the amount of water you this you Coming expel the, the type of streams that oh, you use okay. that's on the top of the hose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you find back in the day while we have our branches this long back in the day they were this long yeah. and they were made of brass the, yeah yeah so they were like 10 times heavier than what we're using now <laughs> which is why you will find you have three four five men at the top mm -hmm. because the hose is heavy it's canvas and the, the, and the, the coupling is brass, yeah. the, the, the branch is brass, and then you have a lot of pressure coming out yeah. because in those days, the pressure control is not as advanced, was not as advanced as it is today. Mm -hmm. Everything is lighter now. It's made from aluminum or sometimes some type of composite material, mm -hmm. um, fiberglass. Mm -hmm. um, so it is much lighter. The hose line now, we're not using the two and a half, we still use that, mm -hmm. but we now use an inch and a half, which is a smaller line, mm -hmm. a lighter line, and it is more easier to maneuver. So you could have one person now controlling that, oh. because on the head, he could control the amount of water he needs uh, yeah. and change the pattern to minimize the force of the water coming out. Oh, okay. So we don't really need to have six men. <laughs> one, two. It used to be fun uh, back then, you know. <laughs> yeah, we always recommend two. The two with our backup, the number yeah, one. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, in case of anything. Yeah, so that's good. Um, Modern technology, everything changes. Just now, we won't have to put any firefighter on the line, actually. <laughs> you might have a robot. <laughs> 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 we got some drones or whatever, yeah, but yeah, you know yeah. how it I is, mean, man. We're getting there, We're now. getting obsolete. We're not getting there. We're getting obsolete, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anything to yeah. keep us out of danger, we are fighting hard That's for that. You know, we want to sit back yeah. and in a chair and conduct all our livelihoods, <laughs> you know? I mean, and imagine so that's that what you can say, is doing now. You could step from the fire station and fly a drone to the scene and control everything I'm, from I'm the I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, he has it, it's, it's books, um, of course. Yeah, but we we get, we're getting lazier, you know. We, and are we get getting, fat. We're getting fat and lazier, <laughs> you know. And we don't want to see any fireman with a big belly, you know? And he don't have any big belly, just of in case not. you're thinking, no, right? No, no, Mr. No. Williams look very fit. Course, Man, look like he's course. doing his thing. <laughs> hey, Wells, if you have anything else to add, let me know. If not, you know, you can uh, wrap it up. And it was a beautiful educational um, program today. Okay. Um, well, basically, I think I could um, wrap up there. Um, just hope that the information that is being shared, of course, it is valuable to all the listeners. And so, so we, as usual, I want to take the opportunity to thank to all the regular one. listeners um, okay, hold on. for listening to the show. Before you wrap, we have somebody who want to yes. you know, maybe have a question or two for you. Yes, yes, so sure. So you have your headphones there? Just put them on there. And we take, well, oh boy, I see my switchboard light up, you know, so that means it's more than one, eh? <laughs> Once the people want to know things, we're going to let yeah, them know. Yeah, of course, okay, of course. No problem. Is that I said radio? Hello? Of course. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Rumpel. Yes, Clarence, what's going on? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, like do, you have, um, do you have the information um, in relation to the first arm? Um, Fire Brigade, where it was um, house in Sinkets. You have any, I think? Well, you're, you're old school, so you might have to help me out. As far as I know, I believe it was somewhere over by the courthouse. No, yeah, in the square. In the square? Mm. Yeah. In the square uh, itself? In the square itself? Actual yeah, square? Yeah, yeah. But that's what I was told. Oh. In, okay, in so, <laughs> so that's, I always thought it was in the area where the courthouse is now. Yeah. Okay, well, stand and uh, stand to be corrected. Yeah, but it was and in that area, that general that area, area. area. Inside the quarters yard, actually. Yeah, yeah, they somewhere used to have there. a shed in there where they used to, the, the, the trucks used to be in there. If I am, if I remember, well. Yeah, I think, it's, I don't think it was actually in the square. Yeah, I think it was, it was yeah. in the, where the quarters is. In the quarters yard. But hey, I'm sure Elder might jump in and, and let us know. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the question, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zeliza Radio, hello. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Back in the days, can we, um, can Mr. Williams tell us the difference between the fire officer and a police officer when they were together? Ah, uh, the difference. Well, the, the, well, for one, they both wore the same color uniform, but of course, the, the firefighter 
would have won a red lanyard. Oh, yeah. That's what we're wearing yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So I believe that is what would have made the differentiation between the police and the, the fire officer. Um, that red lanyard, the police, the, 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 for, for us, all fire officers wear a red lanyard, regardless to the rank. Mm -hmm. Of course, when it reach up to the gazetted rank, the type of lanyard, it changes, it's a different design, but we all wear lanyard, and I think that is what it was like back in the day when police was with fire, all fire officers wore a lanyard, as opposed to police where they would only wear a lanyard when they got up to a certain rank. Mm -hmm. So the private, the constable would not be wearing a lanyard, but the regular fire officer would wear a lanyard. And I think that is what was used as a differentiation. Of course, if there's any old school outside here who would want to chip in, just in case, <laughs> you welcome that, of course. Definitely. But I hope that answers your question, Carla. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Zeliza Radio, hello. Good morning. Fire safety. Morning. Good morning. Me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, but you could I'm a good program, but as he talk about the school, does I mean the children don't trouble nothing? They go to the school. Oh, I don't understand. No, he said that children, mm -hmm. children not to trouble where you are, so. But I say it does go to the school, schools to, to lecture. To oh, oh, you mean if if they go to the school and talk about it? Uh, yes, yes, we do. As a matter of fact, right now we are at the George uh, Moody, George Moody, yeah. George Moody School presently, um, uh, taking part in a, a career fair that they have there. Oh, yeah, for anniversary. Yes, and so those type of engagements we use to um, basically engage the children, share information. We also have sensitization programs where we go out and, and teach. Uh, fire prevention, fire safety in the businesses, in the schools, and so forth. We also have um, a, a, a summer program that we are basically just trying to get back on stream that was basically paused because of the coronavirus and you know, because of all the regulation in place as it relates to social distancing. We had to put it on pause. But we do um, share the information with both the children and the adults. Okay, we got one more caller, ZIZ Radio, hello. Good morning, um, Fireman, thank you for your service and good morning, Rasta. Good morning, morning. Um, good morning. The fire station used to be next to the quarters where they had the electoral, uh, used to have the electoral office. Mm. Right, and right. Fireman, last week, I hear you say you were picking up donation for some police officer. Mm -hmm. Yes, a fire you officer. Know, food like yes. But I want to give you an idea how they do it in the Virgin Island, right? Yes. What they do, they, they dress in the uniform, and they go look by the stoplight. Uh -huh. They go by the supermarket, and so they go with box and bucket, them big white bucket, water bucket. Yeah. That is how they pick up the nation okay. when they're doing anything for the fire. They go cover the whole island. Okay, okay. But you have okay. to know it and say where they will be. Right, Because right. people don't do a lot of things. Yes. So I think that's a good idea because very what good you put sell is going to be very slow. So you yes. dress up in uniform, you cover the supermarket, the stoplight, anywhere you know, and you, you got your bucket on your box, and <laughs> people will, you will get more money than the food sale. So okay. that's the idea. Okay, what okay. And do it in the Virgin Island. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, thank you for thanks, that. Idea. Thanks for that. Very good idea, man. Yes, Very good idea. Yeah, you being out there in public would right, be right. way more better, you know? Right. So. Yeah. That's something we could definitely look at. Of course, Thank especially you. like around the supermarkets and stuff, you know, like, um, who, who does that again? Red Cross? Not Red uh, Cross. Salvation. Salvation. Um, yes, they yeah. does that all the time. And you know, you feel a little guilty when <laughs> you pass it. You got to <laughs> jump yes. a little ticket there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, let's take one more caller, and then uh, we wrap it up. Zeliza Radio, hello. Uh, um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Buddy. Uh, Christian. Mm -hmm. Now, I've realized, he said, the officer said, for the past time, the fire and the police were together. I would like to know why, if you can answer me, why at this present time, in building a building, now the fire is separated. They always put back the police and the fire 
together working in the same building in the rural area? That's the question for today. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> yes, um, that is quite an interesting question. However, I am not, mm. or I might not be the best person to answer that question because we have a representation on, on the building board and um, uh, that's something I would have to research so I could have a, 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 a more proper answer to give to you. Um, I'm, I'm not too certain why they do it. Of course, um, they must have their reasons. So I would have to research that and, and come back. But at this <laughs> point, I'm not able to give you uh, uh, the answer that you might be looking for. But I will definitely research it and come back. If I was to jump in there, I would probably think it um, all depends on space instead well, of two buildings. Space and cost, one probably. Building, yeah? Instead of two buildings, one building, the, the rural areas, the police um, stations is more smaller. Mm -hmm. And so if you put the two of them together. Really. But I guess you guys would like to. The one in um, Sandy Point, police is not in the fire, that building. It's only fire. Yes, the, the, the new building, actually. The one that the one just to go across um, by Bimston Hill. You all yeah, still there? The, the one that they just, well, that is a temporary one. Mm. The, the new one that they just finished um, constructing, that's down at, in the area where Lighthouse Baptist is. Mm. That's down behind there. It's yeah. off the main. Oh, okay. You okay. can see it from the main because it's a big, big building. Mm -hmm. That is a, more of a multi purpose facility where I think it will be housing police, fire, courts, customs. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, it's a huge building. So, like I, I say, I, I would want to believe that it has a lot to do with, with cost and spacing, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Opposed to building four or five separate buildings, they just build one. Um, Person sound like you would like to see them separated. Yes, um, <laughs> I mean, it may probably be better that way. Everybody have their own space. A fire, a fire, a fire officer could make an arrest, right? Um, only under certain circumstances. We have the power to arrest if. If while on duty, if someone is hindering us from performing oh, our duties, okay, okay. yes, we have the power to arrest. But outside of that, we can just normally arrest persons outside that's like that. But Unless course, it's a, like if, a civilian arrest type if, thing. Yes. And if, of course, if you are present while something is happening and uh, you can assist, of course, we expect you to assist because we would have had instances where fire officers would have had to step in mm. to resolve um, a matter, whether it be a fight or uh, what have you. I, I, I have two instances in my mind, but of course, time would not allow me yeah. to <laughs> share those instances. Well, buddy, hey, Williams, yeah. good, good show as usual, good yeah. information. Folks are out there really, really needing these good information. Yes, yes. And so I welcome you every time you come here and we can have a nice little chit chat. We get some cars, yeah. of course. And my switchboard is still up, but time is not <laughs> time, permitting time. it. We're way over the time. Yes, for and sure. so That's I leave cool. the last word to you. Yes, of course, um, as God, I always look forward to being here. And of course, the, when I'm on the street, person stop us all the time and tell us, but the information you're sharing is really good. Mm -hmm. So that for me is a booster. So I always look forward to being here. And of course, thank the public for, for listening, the regular callers for calling in, and those who, who listen and choose not to call in, we thank you for listening as well. And um, just want to encourage you to use the information to keep yourself safe. Keep your family safe, stay fire safe, stay COVID safe. And uh, for those of us who, who believe in praying and prayer and the power of prayer, I'm asking you, Dega, to sue. See, I don't start to pray, ask God. Go ahead, man. <laughs> I'm asking you to pray for the fire department. The fire department is, is getting younger as it relates to the persons who join and those who are taking over leadership. It is getting younger. So I'm asking us to pray for the fire department that they will have the wisdom they need to lead, especially the younger persons know that they will have the, the wisdom and the strength that it takes to lead these people. And so we just want to thank you again. We look forward to being here again next week with some more important information. For now, stay safe. All right. Most appreciated, bro. All and right. looking forward to seeing you. Keep up the good works, man. Yes, man. <laughs> I love the way you're keeping us safe, all of us. Uh -huh, yes, all right. All right. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah